Thomas is a tank engine who lives on the big s F Thomas is a tank engine who lives at the big station on the island of Soto. He's got a f f Thomas is a tank engine who lives at the big station on the island of Soto. He's got a Thomas is a tank engine. Ugh, me. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at the big station on the island of Soto. He's got six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. <laughs> oh, short stumpy funnel, huh? At least I don't have a short stumpy dick. reception from my last video was absolutely amazing and I cannot believe it did as well as it did and a lot of you in the comments were pretty much asking for me to go more in depth in the electronic section department the uh, uh the inner workings of your boy Thomas so I think that's what I'm gonna do here for you today so without further ado I don't want to I don't want to hold you guys up with a massive intro so let's just let's just get right into it in order for me to completely tell you what this entire model is made of, I'm gonna have to break down Thomas into all of his key components. Now, where'd the little rascal go? Huh? I can't seem to. F oh, there he is! <laughs> Come here, you little stupid middle. I just gotta. Hold on, I gotta take him apart. Ah, ah, there we go. Alright, so, here's everything that I used to pretty much put him together. Let's start off somewhere sensible. Uh, let's start with the chassis. The chassis I made is a simple chassis block that's made to pretty much look like the custom CNC aluminum chassis that Thomas's brass models were pretty much equipped with after the uh, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Couldn't think of that movie at all for the life of me. I'm so sorry to anybody offended out there. Pretty much in the spots where the axles are going to be, I made the openings a little bit bigger to accommodate the bearings that are on the axles, which I'll get to in a quick second. The wheels I made actually went through quite a few trial and errors. At first they were obviously just 3D printed because finding metal wheels in America is absolutely impossible unless you're willing to give up an arm, a leg, and your third child. So of course I had to scratch build mine out of 3D printed parts. Of course, if you plan on building a classic series Thomas, you can find custom 3D printed wheels made by, I believe, Tom's props on Shapeways, but Mike Thomas is based on the CNC aluminum wheels which have a slight deviation to them from the original Marklin ones, but I'm a consistency type of guy, you, you feel me? After testing a few wheel designs, I tried coloring the wheels with silver Sharpie and that, that, that didn't work. I tried wrapping the wheels in silver tape, that worked pretty well for a while, but I wasn't satisfied. And so I settled on using silver silk PLA. This stuff is... It's pretty nice. It gives things that nice silver metallic look that the CNC wheels actually need. So that and they don't rub down. So that's a that's a plus. The centered innermost details of the wheels are actually resin printed so that I don't have to worry about sanding and I can just glue these parts together and immediately go into painting. After those parts were tested, fitted, and painted, they were attached to a brass axle. On the axles, I put these ball bearings on them, and if you know anything about ball bearings, these allow for smoother running and quiet running, so yeah, it helps. Also, I forgot to mention that the brass axles, I made 4.5 millimeters, so they have a little bit of slack inside the five millimeter bore of the ball bearings. Obviously, the center wheel does have a gear on it to accommodate for the motor, and at one point, all the wheels were geared together, but now that I need more space inside of my model, and I actually place the motor inside of the chassis, I can only have the center geared, this f the center axle geared. After the wheels, the gears, and the bearings are all put together, I then put all of those in their corresponding spots in the chassis, and then I put the bottom plate in. And of course, this is all held together by my best friend in the whole wide world, hot glue, of course, because hot glue is easy to remove and it's very strong and holds things in place pretty well. Hot glue is like, it's your best friend when it comes to making any parts removable or dismantleable. Trust me on that. Now, I heard from a few sources that adding weights to the chassis actually improve balancing and overall smooth running. So I just decided to add a few weights where I thought were needed and the chassis now has a pretty good weight to it. Now we can go ahead and test out the smoothing of the wheels and how they run and it, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, it runs 
pretty smooth and pretty quietly. It's, it's, it's amazing. Give it a try. Give it a try. Come on now. And again, my number one rule when it comes to model making and technicalities of any kind is making everything removable. So I put these rubber bands on the top of the chassis to hold down the motor so I don't have to glue the motor in place. Now for the eye mechanism. The eye mechanism is not as complicated as I'm about to describe it to you, but it, it, it gave me a pretty large amount of problems, I could say. The eyes are Durlin balls that I used at least, which are held in by two brackets, which is, I, I don't even know the technical names of it. You got the eye plate, which is the smaller part, and then the face plate, which is the bigger part that sits inside the smoke box. Behind the eyes to make them move is this bracket that sits, it's basically like this T-bar, and it moves the eyes left and right, up and down, as you all know. And because I'm just a overall uh, 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 fart smeller. <laughs> I <laughs> just because I'm an overall smart fella, I decided to steal Isaiah's, uh, I guess, ingenuity and pretty much steal the way he made his eye mechanisms move. In which I gotta tell you, it is it, it made life so much easier. It's adding this little tube to the back of the bracket so that the bar on the servo has more work room. Pretty much. I don't know how to explain that, but as you can see here, it just it it makes things easier than having it to stay in one little millimeter of a spot and wiggle back and forth. It just it reduces the eyes jamming and allows for easier eye movement, I guess. Yeah. Now, as you know, the servos are just two generic nine gram servos that are glued together, one for up and right movement, one for left and up and right. Did I just say up and what the f See, this is why I don't. This is why I don't say these things. This is why I leave it to this guy. His eye mechanism had two servos: one for up and down movement, and one for left and right movement. Yeah. See, it's 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 that easy. Anyway, Jamos, he he graciously supplied this servo bracket arm thingy that I glued inside my Thomas body that allows for me to be able to remove the servos because originally I just glued the servo arm to the side of the body, which, again, not a good. Don't uh. No, it's not, no. So now I'm able to just pop the servo back in and out of its arm, and it holds pretty well. That, and I don't treat my Thomas model like an absolute maniac, so. And I hope you don't either. If I see anybody disrespecting their models, I, I, I'm gonna have to find you. It's, it's that simple. I'm gonna have to find you. You're gonna wanna put a rod on the arm of one of the servos, specifically the left and right one, so that it can go into the T-bar so they can control the eyes, you know, move them back and forth, cause without eyes, without looking, without seeing, the whole world goes blind. I think that's how that saying goes, I think. So, as you know, the iMeg is controlled off of this receiver that's controlled off of this controller that's meant for, I believe, airplane RC thingies, I don't know. It's called a Fly Sky I6 Double X Square Double X Square Double X Square uh, Morty, and <laughs> and the receiver has a multitude of things connected to it, which I'm gonna get into later. But through, so far, this uh, the IMEX has two servos. The servos are connected into the receiver, both into two different channels: channel one and channel two. Uh, the controller, blah blah blah, controls the eyes. You know how that works. If you don't know how that works. I'm just gonna show you with a video. Hey, howdy do? I'm gonna be explaining a little bit about your servo endpoints on your FlySky controller. This is the controller we'll be using, the FlySky FS16X. What we're gonna be doing, we're gonna hold the OK button. Now you're gonna see this menu, System Setup. We're gonna click either the up or down. It's gonna go to Function Setup. You're going to want to click OK and press down to get to endpoints. Press OK and here you'll see your channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 endpoints. What you're going to want to do is channels 1 and 2 will be your iMac. Adjust them accordingly to your model so they don't hit the top of the smoke box like mine used to do. I'll demonstrate. See now the servo ends right before it hits the top of the smoke box and the left and right doesn't hit the edge of the boiler. 
The down can have a little bit more freedom, but that's completely up to your model. Since Edward is a medium sized engine, he has a lot more wiggle room. That's all I gotta say about your servo endpoints. Now, I may have a scrapyard full of Marklin, but at least I have some authentic wheels. Eh, John John? When a good thing goes bad, it's Next, what you're gonna wanna do is have the motor powered off of the same controller. Cause unlike me, I was a complete bozo and having the two things powered off two different power, it, it, it's, a, it's a whole thing, but you don't wanna do that. You're gonna need what's called a speed controller, not a speed controller receivo combo. You don't need that cause you already have a receiver. You need a speed controller. The speed controller allows you to turn on the receiver along with whatever else is connected to the receivers and power the motor. The speed controller I use is this one right here. For the life of me, I cannot remember the name of it because what do I look like, a nerd? Yes. <sighs> so what I did also was attach a piece of Velcro to both the receiver and the battery so I can stick them onto the sides of Thomas's body and it's easily removable. Again, I'm all about that removability. So now you have all your electronics, all your components, everything built into this model. Now, the chassis I made actually has a hole in the front and the back. I'm not sure if it's accurate at all to the original. Do not care because who is looking under Thomas's skirt? The chassis actually now screws onto the running board in the front and the back. Thank you to Sodor Engage One for making the running board have these available holes for me to, you know, screw the chassis into. But I ended up editing the running board severely. If you can see it, it's heavily modified again because I just. I'm that type of guy. So now that your whole thing is screwed and put together, plop a face on there. People use blue tack, black tack, sticky tack, thumb tacks. Don't use thumb tacks. Oh my God, do not use a thumb tack to hold that face onto the face plate. Now it works. Now, with the faces, as I said in my last video, your faces are gonna have to have this cutout Dremel piece that, you know, has to fit onto the eye bracket. I resin print my faces so that I have this pre-cut out hole in the back so it saves me time and a mess. So make sure that that's a thing. So that, that's pretty much it. Now your Thomas is running and it, uh, he's great. I forgot to mention. As of recording this video, I recently did some upgrades to my Thomas. And if you follow me on Twitter, <coughs> You, uh, you already know what the upgrades are. I managed to work out a front lamp and a back lamp working off of the same system. Originally, I had a back lamp that was one of these little garden lights that were p the perfect size for Thomas's back lamp, five millimeters, by the way. And all you had to do was screw it to turn it on, screw it, and then, you know, screw it, <laughs> you know? I went to this hobby shop, right? And I had this hobby shop basically custom make me this wire. I don't know if you guys can do it yourself, but, it's possible, and I did it. This wire runs under the running board, through the body, and out the back, and it's connected off of this little switch that's on the controller. I think it's channel six, I believe, yeah. Uh, shout out to Eddie's RC Hobbies. I'm pretty sure it's a family-owned business, but if you guys live in the Yuma, Arizona area, they will gladly help you with any of your electronic and soldering needs. I, you know, these guys did great. They had these wires and the lights pretty much custom soldered for me and I would not have a back or front lamp without them. So thank you to them. All right, let me run down my notes real quick. And uh, yeah, I gotta say that's it. That's all the electronics that make up my Thomas and all the inner workings, not even just electronics. That's everything that pretty much makes my Thomas what it is. You guys really love my model and I have tried making more models in the past. I cannot believe that making this Thomas and the journey I've been on and I continue to go on with making this model has attracted so many people to this place where we can help each other and guide each other and pretty much make models and interact and share experiences that we haven't had before. Enjoying Thomas on our own, enjoying Thomas as a community is by far much better than being a little basement boy. <laughs> what? I kid you not, it's literally written in my notes. Little basement boy, what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, 
once again, I'm really grateful and I'm really thankful for everybody that shows interest and has helped me throughout this entire model making journey and that's continuing to help me throughout this model making journey. I, I, I wouldn't be where I am without you guys, I swear. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all pretty soon.